A-A-Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A-A-Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A-A-Ron! Hey, Aaron is right here, everyone. Thanks for joining me and welcome back to the channel. Boy, do we have a fun one today. Uh, welcome back to SPTV, by the way. Uh, we got some really cool SPTV logos we're going to start using on the screen, uh, but I'm not quite ready to start using that just yet. But welcome back to SPTV anyway. Guys, David Miscavige and Scientology done messed up again. This time it's because they've lost black guy. What the hell am I talking about? Let me show you guys. What up, YouTube? I'm Black Guy. It's me, Black Guy. Black Guy. Black Guy here. It's your favorite Black Guy. Black Guy didn't forget about you. <laughs> black Guy, a.k.a. Blumgum, a.k.a. Guillaume Hines, is a second-generation Scientologist Sea Org member. Guillaume Hines was born into the Sea Org. I don't actually know very many people who were truly born into the Sea Org, and yet Guillaume Hines is one of those people. I personally have a lot of history with Guillaume. We were in the Sea Org together. After we both left the Sea Org, we lived here in Clearwater together. We worked at the same Scientologist-owned uh, post uh, marketing company called Postcard Mania together. Some of our history is good. Some of our history is not so good. However, Blumga... Okay, so when Guillaume... I'm sorry, let me switch back to my... Um, to everyone that knew Guillaume in the Sea Org, he is Guillaume the absolute whitest name anybody could ever be given. Um, it's funny because Guillaume is the only, only one of his siblings. I guess he has a brother. Uh, his brother's named Terrell. <laughs> and yet Guillaume is named Guillaume. Uh, I'm going to show you an excerpt of a podcast that Guillaume did on, um, it, on, 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 on another podcast called On the Edge. Not, not my friend Andrew Gold's podcast. Another podcast called On the Edge. And Guillaume talks for the first time about having left Scientology. And, you know, Guillaume's always been one of these guys that to me never really seemed like a Scientologist. And it's no surprise to me they would, would have drifted away. But, but in this podcast, he publicly discusses leaving Scientology. He calls it a cult. Um, he talks about the C organization. The strangest thing about the podcast excerpt that I'm going to show for you is uh, someone, either the guy hosting the podcast or Guillaume, chose to bleep out the word Scientology every time it's used in the podcast. It's one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Guillaume's um, parents are Sonia Hines and Terrence Hines. Terrence Hines is a moderately successful actor in Hollywood, or at least he was. Sonia Hines has been around forever. Uh, I mean, I guess Terrence has as well, but Sonia's OT8, Class 8. She was a professional field staff member, FSM. That's a Scientologist who makes a living uh, introducing other people to Scientology and getting the 10% commission. Or, uh, it's 10%, it's 15%. I can never remember what commission was training versus what commission was auditing. But um, Terrence Hines, Guillaume Hines, um, uh, Sonia Hines, and his brother. Uh, by the way, Guillaume's brother, uh, I, the whole time I knew, worked at the Celebrity Center. There's more than one reason I'm talking about Guillaume, and I'm sorry to give this such a long intro, but I want to get some of my thoughts out there. <clears throat> Guillaume Hines could be a huge problem for David Miscavige and Scientology. Huge problem. And I think, I think I'll save my further explanation for why until after I show you all of these um, podcasts. I've taken a two-hour podcast, and I've, I've distilled it down to 10 minutes. We're going to watch, watch, watch 10 minutes of this thing with me. I promise I won't try to, I'll try not to stop it every 60 seconds, which means I'll probably stop it every 70 seconds. Um, okay, one, one, let me just show you real quick one more time. His, this is his YouTube channel that he has not used in a long time. It's called Blumgum. So BG can stand for Blumgum. It can stand for Black Guy. He, he calls himself both on his channel. I don't know if you, he has 116,000 subscribers on this channel. Now, I know one of the reasons he stopped doing this channel is that the guy who he was doing the channel with is still a Scientologist. And Guillaume was distancing himself from Scientology. And there were other reasons. The content on this channel is mostly somewhat vulgar, somewhat juvenile. It's mostly Guillaume eating things until he throws up. So there was sort of a public relations image problem with the channel, but it was still a hugely successful channel. And if Guillaume were to pick this channel back up and start doing Scientology content, he would instantly be the second largest Scientology related channel on YouTube. So, okay, what I'm gonna show you now is the actual 
segment. So guys, what I've done, I've edited this down to 10 minutes and uploaded that version to my channel so that I can share it with you guys without, um, uh, while you know, efficiently managing the, the video. But I will include a link in the description to the full two-hour interview. Uh, it's actually on Guillaume's channel. Okay, let's see here. Let's go theater mode. Let's go full screen. Sorry to be so clumsy with this, guys. Oh, and I will do all the super chats afterwards just so everybody knows, okay? All right, guys. Uh, buckle in and uh, let's watch this. All right, guys. This is Scott Groves with On the Edge, On the Edge Podcast. And I can't even get words out of my mouth because we're going to be in for a wild ride. I have my, uh, my good friend. And G here and uh, G is like one of those guys who you talk to and you're like, oh, you're just the most interesting man in the world because uh, he uh, he was born and raised in a cult, which uh, we may or may not get to that. He went by the handle Blum Gum on uh, YouTube where he had a huge following of people just watching him do and eat weird things. And uh, yeah, he's just all around badass black guy. So uh, his words, not mine. So, hey, wh why don't we start there, G? Like, like you happen to be black. I happen to be white. That's how we're supposed to see the whole world now. Like, how are we even friends, man? So oh, oh, I forgot to mention. I, 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 I interrupted myself earlier. Everyone who knows Guillaume from his time in the Sea Org knows him as Guillaume. As soon as Guillaume left the Sea Org, he sort of disappeared to Hawaii for a little bit. He came back to Clearwater, and all of a sudden, he wanted everyone to just call him G. So he goes by G instead of Guillaume, which is which is pretty funny to anyone who knows him. All right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Hawaii, you live in Hawaii. What was the experience like there? Well, first of all, uh, I loved it. it. It was very important time in my life because I had just left working for the cult that I was at. I was 21 years old. I didn't know anyone. I had no money. Um, I had like a thousand dollars and I knew nobody. So this is where I developed a very specific skill, which will come into play here regards to me moving to San Diego. I run solo all the time and I prefer it actually. I don't need any kind of like people to go anywhere with me. I just kind of go wherever I go and I'll chat up whoever's there. Something good came from the cult. At least you can talk to people at, at their level or any level. I think multiple things, even more than that came yeah. from it. Tell people you, you were born in the cult, like literally born. Yeah. And then when did you leave the cult? Okay, so some people may, may not call this a cult, okay? I would. Uh, I was born and raised into something called the C organization. It is the clergy of the church. <laughs> right? That's the best way that. Every time you hear a squeak and the rubber ducky, they're saying Scientology. I don't know what they thought that was going to accomplish, but, you know, whatever. I can describe it. It's a separated group where they're very specific, uh, specifically chosen. There's actually, like, quotes, like, many are called, few are chosen. Like, that's plagiarized for sure. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, because they have staff members who are not SEERG members, and they don't, they don't have such rigid qualifications. They can go home to their families. Whereas the C organization, now they are birthed and fed and everything by the church. <laughs> Make $50 a week. Uh, it might've gone up to $100 a week at this point. Uh, but yes, I was born into this in the headquarters in um, Clearwater, Florida. So I wasn't actually born at the flag land base. I was born at uh, one of the birthings called the Quality Inn. And it was legit a Quality Inn hotel that they bought out and then turned into <laughs> rooms where people <laughs> would sleep. The Quality Inn was specifically for Sea Org members with kids. And the, ki the, the QI, as they called it, is where the kids would be kept all the time. They weren't allowed on the base. They weren't allowed in the same uh, apartment buildings where Sea Org members without kids were kept. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what he's talking about is something that will be very familiar to anyone who spent time at the flag land base, particularly before the year 2000. And I was born in one of those rooms to a midwife. I was there until I was, I don't know, I want to say four. And then there's a major center, obviously, in Florida and a huge, very well-known major one in Los Angeles. And my, my parents hopped back and forth between the, the two for quite a while. I actually think I might have had like 
mental problems as a kid because <laughs> a lot of it I've either forced, forgotten, or don't remember because it, I, I, it, it was a very tough time in my life. And I didn't like, first of all, being moved around. Second of all, I wasn't like really raised by my parents. We were kind of like, they would see us maybe once or twice, you know, once a day or once every couple days because they would be working incessantly doing whatever they're, they call them posts, whatever their jobs were. So guys, real quick, um, I actually did not realize, if I knew this, I forgot I knew this. I did not realize that Sonia Hines and Terrence Hines had been Sea Org members at Flag or in California ever. And so I'm wondering, I'm asking you guys in the chat because I know there's a lot of you who probably know Sonia and Terrence. Uh, please let me know what the deal is with that. Were they Sea Org members? Or was this back when they were letting non-Sea Org members work, hold posts on Sea Org bases? Um, this is new information to me. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and so, you know, we kind of were just rounded into a room and were raised by nannies. The one when I was a little kid, her name was Teresa. I never forgot her. And I saw her later on in life. She had a, a, a liking mm. of me because my name is Guillaume, which is an extremely French name. Um, a lot of people ask me why I was named Guillaume. And I've actually made up a version, but I'll tell you the real version. The executive director of the church's <laughs> name was Guillaume. And that's who they named me after. So, by the way, guys, Guillaume um, Lesev. Guillaume Lesev is the French guy who is, was, is supposed to be the executive director international of the Church of Scientology International. Sometimes you'll hear people ask, are there any other Sea Org executives who've been uh, disappeared the way Shelly Miscavige has? Guillaume Lesev is one of those people. People. Guillaume Lesev has not been seen in public. He's not been seen at an event. Uh, and I'm not saying that because I think, you know, you know, it's not like a missing persons report needs to be followed. Those who understand how the C organization works at the international management level understand why we haven't seen Guillaume. But I just wanted to mention that the guy that Guillaume Hines is named after is one of the missing C org executives. So uh, how how old are you now? And then how long ago did you did you uh, we'll call it fall away from the church? I turned 37 this year. I want to say that. By the way, this podcast was recorded one year ago. I partitioned myself, uh, disconnected myself. I want to say, I mean, it, it wasn't like an immediate thing. It wasn't just like, I'm out. You know, it started meant, you know, you think about it. Uh, and I want to say that happened probably in like maybe a decade ago. Mm -hmm. I started mentally un disconnecting my feelings about it and, and kind of like starting to unwind the clock because it's a lot of mental, like, like nodes that you have to pull out the agreements. And some of them you pull out too many, you know, where you go a little off the rails and you kind of have to yeah. lean back. Cause some of the shit is really good, right? Like Fantastic. some, some of the business knowledge, some of the self-help stuff. Totally. I mean, even I, I, when I was a kid, I was fascinated. Well, not a kid. I was in my twenties. I was fascinated. I read Dianetics and I'm like, mm, part of this is crazy. And part of this is pretty smart. Right. Like anything, you probably took away some good skills and ripping out too much of the, too many of those nodes. Like you said, took you a little bit off the rails at times in your life. For sure. You know, I've definitely, I wouldn't call myself a saint. In fact, there was a, a point in time where I decided that I was going to go off the rails. I was done with people telling me what to do. There's a name for it in, <laughs> in that uh, religion. They call it uh, a service vaccine, which is a very specific word and is described as a mechanism that someone uses there's another word for it, but a mechanism that someone uses to make themselves right and others wrong. The bottom line is I, it took me a while to figure out what it is that I believe, why I believe it, and how much of that syncs up with where I came from, and how much of that is a blend of maybe things that I've learned in my life or prince, other principles that I've come across. Um, you know, to your point, I think he has many amazing things to offer people, okay? But, and even he will say this, in order for you to experience change from they have to find what they call your ruin, but you gotta have the problem first before you need the solution. So um, actually one of the things when- uh, He's actually gonna get off on a tangent here and he's, he's not actually gonna come back to the point that he just started making, which is, um, all the great things Scientology does for you. I would have to wonder what Guillaume feels about this 
now. I know there's some part of this video, if he hasn't already said it, he's going to say it soon, that he, it, he feels he started mentally leaving Scientology about a decade earlier. Again, this video was recorded about a year ago, so we're talking 10, 11 years ago. I'm a little surprised that somebody would be 10 years into their uh, decompression from Scientology and still feel the, the still feel it necessary to be somewhat emphatic about how helpful Scientology can be. I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging that Scientology is helpful to many people in many ways. If you don't make that point, then you're just reinforcing the the in my the the, the false stereotype that you have to be a moron or something to, to join a group like Scientology. I think it's actually very helpful for people to understand that at the lower levels, there's a lot of helpful sort of self-helpy guru motivational type of aspects of Scientology. Guillaume does seem a little bit emphatic about how helpful Scientology is. And yet he doesn't actually explain then, then why have you left? See, I, I think anyway, I, I don't need to get in Guillaume's head. I just wanted to point that out. Let's keep watching when they're like doing the, like the stress test that you see on the street, one of them is to ruin the person. Talk to them, dig, 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 to find out what is it that they're struggling with. And then you press that button hard and you sell them the book. I used to sell the fuck out of books, bro, on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, you know, I think it, part, of, part of it might've been the fact that I was the only black person in the crew. And they're like, let me talk to the one that the, the looks back. different. Yeah, looks right. different, right, right. exactly. It's true. That was always one of the funny things about Guillaume being in the Sierra is you're like, dude, what are you doing here? You're like, you're the only black guy on the entire base. How did you get here? <laughs> and uh, so when I knew Guillaume in the Sea Org, I did not know he was born into the Sea Org. I did not know his parents, um, it sounds like, had been Sea Org members. Um, and I also never knew what the hell Guillaume did. He was the Decem chief, CLO West US, and yet I would always wonder, what do you actually do? And when we both were out of the Sea Org and we were living here in Clearwater, um, at one point we were hanging out and I'm pretty sure I asked him that question, like, what the hell did you do as the Decem chief? And he pretty much said, nothing. I was just really, really good at looking busy. <laughs> the guy was in the Sea Org until he was 21 and he basically did nothing the entire time. Uh, uh, and, and, okay, anyway, I'll, I'll finish my thoughts on this afterwards. Let's finish this up. A little bit more to go, just a couple more minutes. Uh, but let me, also, let me talk to this Mr. T guy over here. <laughs> I didn't look like Mr. T back then. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I, by the way, anybody who's listening to this should go find the Blum Gum video that you did when you were walking <laughs> around um, uh, City Walk as Mr. T. It's it's one of the better ones. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off your no, story. But... Uh, I'm happy with what I have retained. It did give me amazing communication skills. Sometimes, sometimes I can be a complete shithead. But for the most part, you know, I I'm very good at communication. Um, what else did I get from that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, there's more things. I, I feel like you know we've only known each other about I think going on four or five years here now. From there to where you are today, and let's be honest, a little bit of business success, a little bit of money helps. But I, I feel like you're so much more at peace with with what happened and how things went down and, you know, your, your current or lack thereof relationship with your family, you know, it, it feels like you're just in a much better place mentally, which is exciting to see just as your friend, man. So for so what, what, for whatever it's worth, I'm, I'm glad you're there. Okay, good. So that was the end of the clip. So oh, I've actually been meaning to do this video for like a year now. And now I'm glad I'm doing it now after my channel has already blown up to the level that it is because I can now look at Guillaume's channel, the Blum Gum channel and see what he built and see how many subscribers he has and have a very good idea of how much of an impact Guillaume could have if he rebooted his channel and started doing a similar thing on his channel to what I do on this channel. Guillaume represents a, a generation and an experience of Scientology that is actually presently not represented on YouTube. So look, I was in the Sea Org. I was in the Sea Org in LA for a, a, a while, but I was only in the Sea Org in LA for four years. Guillaume grew up out there. 
uh, the, 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 there's sort of a second gen Sea Org population who knows me from working with me, but they don't know me from growing up with me. They know Guillaume from growing up with him. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Mickey Sarkovich, Max Fine, Huck Taylor, Sepp Astrup guard, uh, the, you know, the Odo Huber generation crowd, they know Guillaume, they and all of their peers know Guillaume much better than they know me. Uh, also, you know, my early Scientology experience was at Flag as a non Sea Org member. Um, I would say I'm more well known amongst the non Sea Org Scientology staff around the world than the Sea Org staff because of the nature of the time that I spent at Flag in the late 90s. Guillaume is someone you can see that Guillaume has the gift of gab. Guillaume is very good at talking. He's very likable. And he was in the Sea Org. Okay, there's no one presently speaking. The only one I can think of is Claire Headley. I was going to say no one presently speaking who grew up in the Cadet Org, except Claire Headley did. And uh, Claire Headley has some incredible stories to tell, except her stories are from the UK. I don't know of anyone presently speaking on YouTube about the Scientology experience who, ha who had the experience of growing up in the Cadet Org in Los Angeles and growing up in the Cadet Org in Clearwater. So... Uh, when I say Guillaume could be a real problem for Scientology and David Miscavige, it's because I consider myself to be a real problem for those guys. And Guillaume could do the exact same thing I'm doing and possibly even have more of an impact because how many of the Sea Org members of our generation, I'm only a few years older than Guillaume, know him and know him much better than they know me. And also you can see how likable he is and funny and he's already got a lot of experience in front of a camera and all that stuff. And he's already used to YouTube and he's already got 116,000 subscribers. Now in the interview that I just showed you, um, he talks about he's the loan officer down in, um, was it San Diego, I think. And that's the beautiful thing about what he could be doing right now with YouTube. He could use his Blumgum channel, not only to tell fantastic Scientology stories, interview uh, other people who left the Sea Org like, uh, like him, uh, but he could promote his loan officer business or, or whatever business he happens to be in now. I'm just assuming it's still loan officer. He could promote his business. He could kill two birds with one stone, maybe three birds. Um, and speaking of which, I haven't promoted my business on my channel in a long time, which is the real estate business, the dream realty business. So I am a licensed uh, realtor. Anybody in the Tampa Bay area who wants to buy or sell a property, if you want to work with me, you can message me at Aaron at dreamrealty.com. It would be my pleasure to work with you. So guys, just think, uh, Guillaume, I don't know, this is going to sound silly. Guillaume, you could have A.A. Ron and Blumgum, A.A. Ron and Black Guy. I mean, it could really be funny. Guillaume could really figure out how to knock it out of the park if he brought his channel back, did some Scientology content. I mean, it could be like just Scientology storytelling with Blumgum. The guy's got an unlimited number of stories he could tell, stories David Miscavige would not want anyone to hear. So I guess that's my, and you know what? And, and then you wouldn't have to see me and Mark and Mike doing chats all the time. We could have Blumgum in the mix as well. <laughs> An another addition to the uh, SP TV extended network of friends. So that's my plea. That's my plea to Guillaume. And uh, I wonder if it's funnier. Would it be funnier for his YouTube persona if he continued to go by G? Or is it actually even funnier to have uh, a, a young buff black dude going by a, a white French name? Guillaume. It's pretty goddamn funny if you ask me. All right, everybody. Um, that's all I got on this for now. That's probably all I'm going to do this evening as well. Uh, stay tuned for more tomorrow and uh, all next week. Uh, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a different one of my videos, uh, Oh, you can't even Then you could click. Wow.